So today I'm finally going to talk about uh, Crucial's fastest Gen 5 SSD, the T705. Uh, it's not really that new anymore, but I didn't manage to do it before, even though it was one of the most requested reviews when it comes to SSDs. So without any further ado, uh, let's just check it out. Let's see how it performs and how it compares to other options on the market. Let's begin. The T705 is available in three capacities, uh, one terabyte, two terabytes, and four terabytes. And even though I fully understand the lack of a smaller 512 gigabyte option, I do think that Crucial should consider adding a larger eight terabyte version to the list. You can get it with a pre-installed heatsink or without a heatsink. And they even added a limited edition white version that is unfortunately only available if you go for the two terabyte model. It is actually a bit too tall for the PS5 use, but keep in mind, the PlayStation 5 is not able to use the speeds that a Gen 5 drive can offer, so it doesn't really make sense to buy one for your PlayStation 5 anyways. And for this video, I actually tested the 4TB version without a heatsink, and as you can see, this version has components on both sides, which might not be compatible with some laptops, so please do keep that in mind. Now, if we look at specifications on Crucial's own website, uh, they don't really share that much information about this drive, but the exact specs are not really that hard to find. At its core, the T705 uses the same Fison E26 controller that they use for their T700 drive, and that is actually used in most high-end Gen 5 SSDs on the market. But it does come with slightly faster memory compared to the T700, using Micron's 232-layer uh, 3D TLC NAND with 2400 megatrans Transfer per second rating. And that is why this is not a 12,000 megabyte per second drive like before, but a 14,000 megabyte per second drive. Of course, it comes with a DRAM cache with a size of a one gigabyte per terabyte of capacity. A total bytes written rating is the typical 600 terabytes per terabyte capacity with the usual warranty period of five years. Like in every other SSD video, I'm going to start with the PC Mark 10 Quick Benchmark, uh, which is a nice collection of tests that simulate a lot of very simple little things we do with our PCs every single day. So things like working with documents, for example, looking at your vacation photos, photos, loading your games, and so on. And this is a very useful benchmark for anyone that is looking for a drive uh, to mostly use for those simple little tasks. So it is definitely not a use case that requires an expensive high-end Gen 5 drive like this one, but you still kind of want it to do well in this test. And the T705 did very well here. It actually just managed to top this chart, landing just behind the Aura's 14,000, but that difference is basically within a margin of error along with the rest of the Fison E26-based drives. It is definitely a nice performance upgrade compared to the T700, and it managed to stay ahead of the brand new 9100 Pro from Samsung. The full PC Mark 10 suite simulates a bit more intense and a bit more serious use of your drive. And this is a great benchmark to look at if you're looking for a new main drive or you need to uh, run some applications that can be very heavy on your SSD. And here, the T705 ended up just behind the new 9100 Pro from Samsung and right next to the other drives that use the same parts. But keep in mind, the differences between all those Gen 5 drives at the top of the chart are still very small. Looking at the latency, the general order remains the same, so the T705 holds up very well, and it is only just behind the 9100 Pro. The consistency test is not that relevant for a lot of you because it simulates a very extreme and a very intense multi-hour long workload that most of you will never ever do but i still believe that it is very interesting to see how a drive will hold up when you really stress it for such a long time and then especially so when you have an expensive high-end ssd like this one and here the t705 holds up very well too ending up in the third spot so it is just behind the corsair mp700 pro se and aura's 14000 it is just ahead of the 9100 Pro from Samsung and significantly ahead of the older T700. So this is a great option for anyone that does need to do really heavy workloads. 
Now, 3D Mark Storage is a bundle of various tests that simulate all kinds of different gaming related tasks. So things like loading games, installing games, moving game folders around, recording your gameplay and so on. And of course, uh, this is a very useful benchmark for anyone that needs a drive to use primarily for gaming. And here, the T705 just managed to take the very first spot, ending slightly ahead of the Corsair Gigabyte ND MSI drive, and just ahead of the 9100 Pro as well. And if we just look at the gaming results that I personally find most important, which is uh, loading times, installing games, and updating your games, the result is pretty much the same. So it scored around 125% of the fastest Gen 4 drive that I tested so far, the T500 from Crucial, which again puts it right next to the MP700 Pro SE, Aorus 14000 and the M580 from MSI, and just ahead of the Samsung 9100 Pro. Sequential read and write performance numbers don't really represent proper real life use as well as previous benchmarks do, but it can still be a very useful metric for some people. And when it comes to sequential writes, the T705 scored just under 12,000 megabytes per second, landing just behind the 9100 Pro, but still ahead of most other drives in this list. In sequential reads, it is just the tiniest bit behind the 9100 Pro from Samsung, which also means it is well above Sony's required read speed for PlayStation 5 use. But as I said before, the PlayStation 5 does not support PCIe Gen 5 speeds just yet, so uh, buying an expensive Gen 5 SSD uh, doesn't make that much sense in my opinion. And uh, unless you can buy this uh, with an extremely good discount, you're just probably better off buying a more mainstream DRAM-based Gen 4 drive instead. Just like every other Fison E26-based drive, the T705 without a heatsink can get pretty hot. So if you stress the non-heatsink version, it will get really hot within minutes and it will start to throttle and lose performance. But with a heatsink and a little bit of airflow around the drive, that should not be an issue. So just make sure you use some sort of cooling for this SSD. And if we look at the average power consumption of an SSD that is being used as a primary drive with a very light workload, which is uh, similar to using your PC for some browsing or some simple office work, the T705 averaged 2.4 watts, so about a watt more than the 9100 Pro and a bit more than the 9090 Pro and the Aorus 14000 as well, which is quite interesting since the Aorus has the exact same components as the Crucial. So this Fison E26 based drive might not be the best option if you care a lot about efficiency. And this is an interesting result for laptop users, for example, where power and battery drain during light use can be a real concern. Anyway, the T705 is one of the fastest SSDs that you can currently buy. And until recently, Crucial also had the benefit of being one of the more widely available Gen 5 options since the Corsair MP700 Pro SE, uh, Gigabyte Aorus uh, 14000 and the MSI M580 were just either very hard to find or very expensive. But now the Samsung 9100 Pro is out as well and we finally have some proper competition for this drive. And if we put them side by side, they're actually not that different performance wise, but Samsung does offer uh, explicit support for most popular encryption methods. Uh, they do have a better software package and they have slightly lower power consumption. So the T705 will have to be a bit more competitive when it comes to price to make it a more sensible option of the two. Looking at the four terabyte capacity in the US, the T705 costs about $490 at the moment, which is about $60 less than the 9100 Pro. But considering the fact that the T700 will cost you $350 and you can get the Samsung 990 Pro for $317, there are not that many use cases that can justify spending an extra $140 to $170 on your SSD. Uh, looking at the two terabyte prices, the T705 will cost you $290, but you can get a T700 for $210 or a 990 Pro for $170. Or even a four terabyte T500 for the exact same price with a four terabyte 990 Pro being only a tiny bit more. 
So it is very nice to have a tiny bit of extra speed, but most use cases that I know of will also benefit a lot from having some extra capacity too. And uh, if we look at the prices here in the Netherlands, the 4 terabyte T705 has been selling for around 440 euros, which is again 60 euros less than what you would have to spend for the 9100 Pro, which does seem okay until you realize that you can get a 990 Pro for 140 euros less or a T500 for 160 euros less. So in my opinion, the price will need to come down even further for a drive like this to really become a sensible option for most people out there. Uh, the performance is definitely there, but in order to justify paying a premium price for a drive like this one, uh, compared to some very excellent options on the market like a 990 Pro or a T500, you really need to be sure that you actually need that extra performance or you just want the fastest drive and you don't really care how much it costs, which is also completely fine. I do the same. But keep in mind, prices change all the time and they do vary heavily on the region that you are in. So make sure you always check the current prices in your region at the time of your purchase before deciding uh, which drive makes the most sense to get. That's it. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their brand new gaming monitor, the Xenion 34WQHD 240C. This beautifully designed monitor comes with a top-of-the-line 34-inch QD OLED panel with a subtle 1800R curve and ultra-wide Quad HD resolution, 240Hz refresh rate, instant response times and a near-perfect color reproduction, making it a great option for anything from fast-paced games to immersion games, from content consumption to content creation. And if you are worried about possible burn-in that is inherent to all OLED panels, Corsair has you covered with a three-year long warranty that includes burn-in. So if you're looking for a new high-end ultra-wide, please do check out the link in the description below. Thank you all for watching and sticking to the end of this video. I really hope it was interesting and helpful enough. Uh, if you liked it and you want to see more videos like this one, please do consider clicking that subscribe button so you never miss my future uploads. Bye guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.